Hello and welcome to another edition of Alien Investigations. As always, I'm your host Steven, and joining me all the way from Kentucky is Jonathan. How's it going over there, Jonathan? It's good in Kentucky. Excellent. So good to have you. Good to have you on the channel. Uh, so tell me, so how long have you been a fan of X Files CCG? Um, I actually bought these cards new uh, at my comic shop when I was a teenager. Oh well, I, yeah, I guess I was a teenager. I would have been. 16 in 96 and 17 and 97 and i bought them new then uh the guy who ran the store at the little place that i grew up he actually ordered them for me because i was i might have been the only one buying them but uh i bought them way back when and i held on to them for a really long time um <clears throat> and i actually ended up selling off everything i had and then i got back into it probably three years ago. And originally I, I had never actually played the game when I bought it originally. Uh, no one, no one played. Uh, and I, I don't even know anybody who bought it. So I was just essentially doing it for collectible reasons back then. And then I found the channels on, you know, Mike and Matt's stuff online and, 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 you know, found you and got involved with everybody doing this and, and actually learned how to play. It was really uh, difficult finding anyone who had more than a half-hearted interest in playing until, of course, as you say, years later, we discover, oh, there's a little niche group out there that does enjoy playing the game. And, you know, with the advent of modern technology, we don't have to necessarily be in close quarters with one another in order to actually play a game. So, so this video, although it may be coming out a few months later, is on the heels of Sunday's live unpacking of the 040460 season four expansion the unofficial season that i'd been working on for a little over a year um so finally got the first complete set printed and delivered to me so just to keep you guys up to speed on where we are with that now that i have the physical cards in hand i'm just doing another thorough review of the cards scouring pouring over them like a Dead Sea Scrolls scholar trying to find any other flaws, whether it be cosmetic, grammatical, punctuation, any of that stuff that, you know, we can try to nip in the bud before we send them all out to you guys. And then, then Dax has to suddenly do a bunch of reprints for certain cards in which we missed a little flaw here and there. Trying to avoid that. It's a lot of effort on his part. And ideally, he won't have to do any reprints for you guys after the cards get sent out to everyone so right now i'm just trying to make sure we eliminate as many of the imperfections there there might still be on those cards i did find a couple just today when i was reviewing them so dax has a couple things to fix nothing serious again it's mostly you know cosmetic and grammatical stuff nothing major but anyway for those of you who are wondering that's where we are at but in the meantime jonathan and i have a, a very special game for lined up for you guys this evening Jonathan, who recently acquired a complete set of the Gen Con demonstration deck, the 60-card uh, demo deck that was available for um, demonstrators during Gen Con 96, not for commercial release, that is, just for the demonstration at that convention in which there were less than 100 decks made available. So a few happened to make it out into the wild, and a couple decades later, you got some people who've been sitting on their Gen Con decks or letting them fester in a garage for many years have decided to finally part ways with them. And now, those of us eager fans who often dreamed of acquiring one of these decks have had opportunities to finally get our hands on them. And Jonathan is one of those lucky individuals. In case anybody hasn't seen it, Let's see. That's the box they came in. This box is actually cool. in really good shape. <laughs> it does actually. I've seen some. I've seen some decks online, some photos of them, and sometimes that box did not uh, stand the test of time very well. And you'll notice as Jonathan's holding up to the camera now, the one indicator on the backside of the Gen Con cards that distinguishes them from the commercially released ones is that little bit of text at the bottom that says for demonstration purposes only. And looking at the front of the card, you'll see the aesthetics, the graphics, a lot of those 
uh, cosmetic changes were made uh, from the Gen Con cards to the final product that was uh, made available at the at the end of '96. Yeah, the bluffs especially they they had a different uh, graphic on them. They had that VHS tape. Mm hmm. Yep, that was a very noticeable one. Yeah, a lot of the graphics were smaller, a little more minor. Sometimes there might be like a pencil that was on a car, yeah. a pencil graphic, then they took it off, things like that. So Jonathan has uh, um, courageously agreed to utilize his very rare uh, Gen Con deck in a game, which you don't see very often anymore. A lot of times um, those who do have one are inclined to maintain its utmost condition by hermetically sealing them in cases and you know putting them on display somewhere uh yeah so this is great uh, unfortunately i do not have the privilege of owning a 60 card gen con deck however through matt and mike's x files ccg i was able to acquire a couple of those along the way through contests and giveaways and things like that anyway as i was saying while i don't have the privilege of owning a gen con deck I do have a couple of Gen Con cards, which I have incorporated into this deck. However, um, Jonathan, because the Gen Con deck comprises 60 cards, and that is the bare minimum for a standard Bureau deck, you had to include some commercially released cards because amongst that 60 cards, there were X-Files, like another agent, things like stuff that you couldn't necessarily use. So mm -hmm. you threw in a few of the commercially released cards. Is that correct? I, I think I ended up with 61 cards. I think I put 10 other cards. I did put no one so paranoid is in this deck. Excellent. Uh, I'm going with a, a lean and mean deck here of which contains only premier edition cards and some of the 96 promos that were made available shortly around the time that the premier edition was released. So those are the only cards that are comprising my bureau deck. Why don't we go ahead and introduce our agents at this point? Which of the five Gen Con agents did you decide to uh, use for this game? Well, I've got Mulder and Albert Holstein, Alex Krychek, and Special Agent Karen Kosoff. <laughs> so that would leave uh, Agent Dana Scully as the odd mm -hmm. man out. I uh, do have Agent Dana Scully over on my end here, and so she is the lead agent on my team, of which also includes Agent Mo Box, Dr. Charles Burke, and Albert Hosteen. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is our team of agents that will be uh, squaring off uh, in this uh, game this evening. And so, Jonathan, are you about ready to uh, about ready to throw down, my friend? I'm ready. Okay, cool. You got your hidden X files, is that right? I do. Excellent. And I've got mine right up here. So before we begin, we're going to decide which of us is going to be going first. Jonathan, I know you've seen a number of episodes on my channel. You know how I decide uh, who, which of us is going to be starting off as the investigating player and which of us will be starting off as the conspiracy player. If you pull this one, investigating player. If you pull the blue one here, you'll start off as the conspiracy player. So I ask you, which hand is it going to be? Uh, your left. My left hand? That means you're going to be starting off as the investigating player. So with that, we are set to go. <clears throat> we're going to draw our seven, and we're going to get this show on the road. And I just also want to point out that we are playing the advanced version of the game, despite this being a Gen Con deck, which was geared towards just the basic version of the game. Uh, so for that reason, you might see a few advanced cards come up on Jonathan's end that are part of the commercial release cards. That's exactly right. All right, go ahead and draw your free card, and we'll get this uh, briefing phase going. Go ahead and read off uh, which who which agents have what uh, res. Mulder has two, but I need to draw his two cards. Right. And then Albert has one, and Alex has two. And Karen has one. All those to your resource pool? Yep. Which brings it up to nine, right? Uh -huh. So we're at nine on that. We'll pass it over to me real quick, and I'll uh, 
decide which of these lovely cards I will part ways with. Um, I'm going to sell the Fighter Interceptor for four, which is going to take my Conspiracy Pool up to nine. And of that, I'm going to buy four cards, and that's going to take my Conspiracy Pool back down to five. And I pass it back over to Jonathan, uh, so we'll head into healing. But seeing as this is the inaugural round, Jonathan will not need to do any healing. So we'll head into awesome. requisition then. Do you have any equipment you want to requisition to the agents right now? Think I do, which almost never happens. <laughs> but this is one of those that's good to use, uh, the yeah. cell phone. You got the cell phone. Oh, sweet. <laughs> that's that's one of those that you don't want to sell. <laughs> Yeah, it helps if you had Skinner, but uh, I think yeah. for this batch, I mean, yeah, Mulder or Crycheck would probably be a. Mulder is probably where I'm going to put him. Even if you're right, you'll have a much better chance of finding Cole if you work up a profile and try and surmise his next move. All right. I'll sharpen my pencils and I'll see you later. Yeah, so I'm going to put the cell phone on Mulder. Because it really wouldn't be X Files if Mulder didn't have a cell phone in his hand, right? Absolutely, that works underground. Yeah, <laughs> somehow. Yeah. So that will take me down. It's its cost is four, so that will take me down to five. Yeah, that'll do it on the equipment for now. Right on. Uh, and so then we'll head into deployment, and Jonathan will then be deciding which of his agents he will send out to the field and which will stay behind to shuffle papers at the FBI headquarters. I believe I will send everyone but Mulder into the field. Let's head into case assignments. Uh, pray tell, Jonathan, where will you be sending your three agents, potentially? We will be going to Arlington, Virginia, hopefully. But this kind of abuse is not limited to just one child, so I checked out Charlie's history as well. Charlie had medical problems too? Since his brother was born, which is right when Holby's mother-in-law moved in. Often the perpetrator of Munchausen by proxy will view the child as evil. The old woman would be a likely candidate, but it could be any family member. Do you feel like taking a walk over to the State Department's calling? And I believe I will let Mulder pay for that with one of his. I think it's him that does it, isn't it? Yeah, he's got three tokens. He can use one of them to pay for uh, that site, which is a good call because the mono sites like Arlington, Virginia cost two. So good time to use Mulder to pay for the whole thing. And now Jonathan is going to wait and see if I have any bluffs for... Uh, this site, and I do, but just one, just one bluff. Just one, uh-oh. So let's head into the investigation phase, and at this point, Jonathan is going to decide which, if any, of his agents he would like to assign to that particular site. I will assign everybody that's in the field to that site. Excellent. So uh, Alex Krychek, Hosteen, and Karen Kostov are all heading to Arlington, Virginia, and... Tell us about the skills that uh, they have. It's an occult investigation site, yes. It's an occult investigation four plus. Uh, Alec, uh, Albert has four by himself. Hmm. And Karen Kosoff has two. Krychek actually doesn't have any, but he's in there to help deal with uh, potential adversaries. adversaries. <laughs> yep, that's what he's best says, yes. the hired gun. Mm -hmm. So, uh, between... Hosting and Kasif, Jonathan is sitting on a total of six occult investigation, which is more than enough to investigate uh, Arlington, Virginia, which is an affiliation question. Is that correct? It is an affiliation question. And also, uh, let's see, Mulder also has three. Yeah, so he could potentially attribute up to two because you have to subtract mm -hmm. one from, from the cell phone. All right, first things first, let's reveal that bluff. And it is Nasty Surprise. And Nasty Surprise allows me to add five tokens to my conspiracy pool. And because it was face down, the cost of three is reduced to two. And so I'll be adding three to my conspiracy pool for 
total of eight. So with that out of the way, now I will play a card from my hand, starting with the Poltergeist Attacks, with, which is an adversary that has an activator of a cult investigation, which is one of the keywords found on Arlington, Virginia. Mm -hmm. And Poltergeist Attack, Jonathan, has the keywords occult, creature, phenomena, and, of course, adversary. Before I forget, I'm going to subtract three from my conspiracy pool to pay for Poltergeist yes. Attack, which will take me down to five. Let's see. No, I can't. Uh, I've got a card that can be played, but it's got to be, we've got to get through the adversary first. Okay. So in this case, uh, because Jonathan doesn't have any cards to negate the uh, Poltergeist Attack, we're going to head into this the combat subroutine in which... Uh, the Poltergeist attack and Jonathan's team of three agents will be uh, squaring off. However, there's a little bit of a a little bit of a downside for you, Jonathan, because the Poltergeist attack, as its game effect states, is unaffected by combat attacks, which means your team won't even be able to apply damage to it because it's a ghost. Mm -hmm. It will attack for only one long range combat and one close-range combat round, and then it's discarded. It'll go away. We're, what we're going to do is we're going to head into long-range, in which, as I said earlier, the Poltergeist attack only has two long-range, and he'll be inflicting that on Albert Hosting. And so Albert Hosting's health is reduced from three to one, so he's still in there, but just hanging by a thread. And then we're going to head into close-range combat, and again, the Poltergeist attack only has two close range, and he'll be inflicting those on Albert Hosting, which is going to be enough to send him to the hospital with uh, three tokens of damage. Meanwhile, the Poltergeist attack will shuffle off and haunt some other unsuspecting soul. I'm going to play True Grit for one. Oh, okay. So that will still allow Albert to contribute his skill. Uh, he still has to go to the hospital, still gets to right. tries to heal like normal, but he still gets to contribute. Excellent. Good card. And that only costs like what? One, right? One. Oh, nice. That's, that's a, easy. Yeah, it's a great card. So hosting is still in it at this point. So at this point, you're still sitting on a total of six. And even if you include molders uh, to, you know... Yeah, you're sitting pretty on a cult investigation at this point, despite uh, my best effort with the poltergeist <laughs> attack. Well, that's only because yeah. you didn't have two bluffs. <laughs> yeah. And an well, it's funny you should mention that, because <laughs> while I only had one bluff that I played face down, I did keep, uh, I did keep mm -hmm. one in reserve, and I'm going to go ahead and play that now, because it's the only card I've got left that I could possibly oh, play to no. stop you. And that is Detective Thompson, which I'll be paying for the full cost because I played it face up, which will reduce my conspiracy pool to two. And Detective Thompson will change the site prerequisite to bureaucracy three. Any suspects yet, Detective? I don't work for you, sir. And unless you hear different from the Attorney General, uh, this case is a local matter. Agent uh, Mulder, we should go. There's no need to get bent out of shape. Just... On the contrary. 
I think I've been exceedingly polite. Yep, I believe that does it for me then. Because I won't have any way to get to Bureaucracy 3. And unfortunately, Arlington, Virginia will have to go into the waste basket. And we're going to head into the debriefing phase at this point, in which uh, Jonathan and I will assess our remaining cards and decide if, what, if any, we want to discard. I'm currently sitting on seven cards, so I'm inclined to keep them all at this point. What about you, Jonathan? You keeping I'm, them all? I got seven, and I'm good to sit on them. Sounds good. And I'll draw my free card to start a new round. Now it's my turn to assess my agent's res. Uh, Dana Scully has two. Mo Box has one, Dr. Charles Burke has one, and Albert Hosteen has one for a total of five. And so that'll take my resource pool up from five to ten. And of that ten, I think I'm going to... Hmm, let's do three cards. And that'll take my resource pool down from ten to seven. I got hard evidence, which I'll play that right now for two, which will add five tokens to my resource pool. So that's going to take it up from seven to ten. And at this point, I'm going to turn it to Jonathan to sell any resource cards he would like uh, to add to his conspiracy pool. Well, we were looking for her, and she showed up. Uh, Is that? I'm going to sell Dana Scully Ah, for her two. And wiretap for its two. And that'll get me up to nine. And are you going to buy any cards with that? Uh, no, I think I'll stay where I'm at. We'll head into the healing phase, but seeing as this is my agent's first foray for the game, we won't be needing to do any healing. For requisition phase, I did draw an equipment card, and I think I'll go ahead and requisition that. Um, it's not as lovely as the Nokia cell phone that Jonathan has over there, but, you know, it may come in handy. I'm going to requisition the Geiger counter to Agent Scully for the low cost of two, and that'll take my resource pool down from 10 to 8. Now, the Geiger counter, Jonathan, will add one to the Agent's alien investigation skill, which is uh, good because Dana Scully doesn't have any alien investigation skills to speak of. From the trucker's description, the shape he fired upon could conceivably have been a mountain lion. Conceivably? The National Weather Service last night reported atmospheric conditions in this area, which were possibly conducive to lightning. Possibly. And the Geiger counter does have the activator of Bureau, which means it can be requisitioned to Dana Scully because she currently is in the Bureau section of the table. All right, so let's head into deployment, and we'll be sending all four agents out to the field. For case assignment, we will be sending our agents to potentially two sites because we are playing advanced version of the game after all. And those two sites, Jonathan are Cape Cod, Massachusetts, and Lake Okoboji Campsite 53 in Sioux City, Iowa. And Mo Box is going to use his uh, game effect to pay one uh, for any cards that have the keyword alien investigation or occult investigation. And I can use that once per turn. And so he's going to pay half of Lake Okoboji. And so I'll deduct one to pay for the other half of Lake Okoboji. You think this grave was unearthed by aliens, Agent Fox? Well, it has all the telltale signs, don't you think? I mean, according to the literature. Literature. You know the way the hair and nails have been cut away? Sort of like they do in cattle mutilations. For Cape Cod, we'll pay the full amount, which will cut my uh, resource pool down to five. So Cape Cod, I'll start with that, Jonathan, is a monosite with the keywords affiliation and sciences. And Lake Okoboji, Jonathan, is also a monosite with the keywords motive and alien investigation. 
Well, I suppose before you do decide to play anything face down, I might as well go ahead and get rid of Hosting's token at this point. Because, you know, it's just burning a hole in the card. <laughs> so. A Belagana. What is this? This is where you pucker up and kiss my ass. Now listen, you. Oh, you listen to me, you son of a bitch. This man's name is Albert Hosting. You should remember that. Because if Angels Mulder and Scully come down with so much as a case of the flu, Albert is prepared to recite chapter and verse, file for file, everything on your precious tape. It's a nice try, Skinner. I'm sure you're thinking Albert is an old man. And there are plenty of ways that you might kill him, too. Which is why in the ancient oral tradition of his people, he's told 20 other men the information on those files. So unless you kill every Navajo living in four states, that information is available with a simple phone call. Uh, Jonathan, uh, why don't you show me what uh, cards you have in your hand? Oh, man, I should have played that faster. <laughs> yeah, I did give you a little bit of a chance. Yeah, you did. All right, so for those of you who are unaware, Albert Hosting uh, has one token, which I'll discard to examine Jonathan's hand, and I'll select any one conspiracy card, and if Jonathan should play that conspiracy card in the course of the game, I will be awarded a question regarding his X-File. So, Jonathan, what cards do you have in your hand there, my friend? Well, I've got the two bluffs I was going to play. Uh, uh, <laughs> what are they? <laughs> laser Barrier and Sleep Deprivation. Which... Ah, which will reduce the skills by one for one agent. Okay, what and else laser, do you have? Laser Barrier prevents one agent assigned to the site from contributing. And this is a, this is one of my favorite cards when you can use it if it doesn't get negated. Deny everything. Lovely card. Expensive. Okay. Yeah. Lovely. And then grid pattern search. Yep. Hard to see here. Yep. Well, that's why I'm going to have them pop up on the screen. <laughs> and then travel arrangements. Travel arrangements. All right. So that's what you have in your hand. That's it. Okay, and let me and remind me, uh, how much conspiracy uh, points do you have in your pool at the moment? Nine. Nine. Okay. Sorry, my cat is standing right behind me, making a whole lot of noise. So I need to <laughs> quiet him down for just a moment. All right, playing a game, buddy. Let's keep it down. Okay, so you currently have nine in your conspiracy pool, which is certainly enough to play that deny everything. Yep. So yeah, final answer: hosting's token on deny everything. All right. So with that out of the way. Let's uh, turn it to Jonathan to assign any bluffs, of which I know he has two. I'm assigning one to each site face That's down. smart. Very smart. All right, so which one is assigned to which? This one, Cape Cod. This one, Okaboji. All right, sounds good. All right, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use one of Scully's three tokens to take a look at the bluff that you have on Lake Okoboji. Sleep deprivation. Okay. Excellent. And that decreases all the skill levels on one agent, my choice, by one this turn only. So you can go ahead and put it face down again. And now we will head into the investigation phase mm -hmm. in which I will assign my agents to the site. I'm going to... Sent, I'm going to put Mo Box and Albert Hosting over here at Lake Okoboji and Dana Scully and Charles Burke over at Cape Cod, Massachusetts. Now, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to play Alien Discretion. play alien discretion in which i will play on a team about to investigate a site with alien investigation as a prerequisite discard all cards assigned as bluffs at that site x equals the number of bluffs at that site and so i'll pay one for the cost of alien discretion 
and I'll pay another one because you have only one bluff assigned to that site. And so you'll discard that, and that one goes into the can, and that will take my cons my resource pool down to three. With that bluff out of the way, I'm going to now apply my agent's skills to the site prerequisite, which is Alien Investigation 4, of which Mobox has two, Albert Hosteen has two, which is just enough to make the prerequisite a four. And again, this is a motive site. Uh, do you have anything uh, you wish to play at this site, Jonathan? No, that one was that was it. Okay, so with that, uh, the site investigation for Lake Okoboji has been successful, and my team has been awarded a motive question. And so, Jonathan, I ask you, by any chance, is your X Files motive survival? No, it is not. It okay. is not. I'll get old blue Sharpie out and start scratching off all of the X Files that have a motive of survival. That still leaves 32 possible X Files to choose from, which is quite a few. So I'm going to discard Lake Okaboji at this point. And now we're going to turn our attention to Cape Cod, Massachusetts, which again is a sciences uh, prerequisite and an affiliation question is involved should it be successful. Scully has three sciences. Charles Burke has two. So that's enough to make the prerequisite of four. I ask you, Jonathan, would you please flip over that bluff? There we have laser barrier. Play to prevent one agent assigned to a site from contributing that agent's skills to one skill check. My choice that the team makes this turn. Okay. And what skill, which agent is that going to be? Scully. Okay, and what skill? Sciences. All right, okay. and so because Laser Barrier was face down, that's only going to cost you one, is that right? That's right. Okay, well, fortunately I did pull one very cheap card that is going to get me out of that, and this is Langley. Ah. That will play for two, and Langley will force one bluff attached to his site to be discarded. If Lone gunman. It's Mulder. Turn the tape recorder off. Okay. It's off. Turn it off. It's off already. How would you like to have on your front page the first substantiated photo of an extraterrestrial biological entity? No way. An EBE? What do we have to do? Just hack me some identification numbers. So, uh, with Cape Cod having proven successful, my team has been awarded an affiliation question regarding Jonathan's X-File. And I'll be asking Jonathan, by any chance, is your X-Files affiliation government? It is not. It is not government. So that will shave off uh, seven more possibilities, which will still leave about, what, 30, 25 possibilities to choose from. Still way too many. So I'm not inclined to take a crack at identifying Jonathan's X-File at this juncture. All right, so with that, we're going to head into the debriefing phase, and I only have five cards remaining. You made me uh, really work for that investigation. Are you keeping all the cards in your hand? Yeah, I feel like there's one you might want to part ways with just because what good there, would it do? There's still a good use for that card. All right, so we'll pass it back to you and then hopefully be able to replenish that hand a bit, in which you will be able to, by start drawing a free card for starters, and then I'll, uh, Mulder, Mulder's effect will give me two more. Two more for sure. Right, Hosting does not get to apply his res, so you only get to apply the two from Crycheck and the one from Karen. Uh, right. This time. That puts me up to seven. Let's see. I think I am going to buy two. Which will still leave you with five, which is pr not too shabby. And now I turn it over to you, sir. Excellent. I'm going to sell Deep Throat for five, and that's going to take my conspiracy pull up from two to seven. Now the question is, how much do I want to buy with that? I really don't want to, but I think I'm going to take it down from seven to three, and I'll buy four. Hopefully, 
I guess something that's relatively cheap. Because I did put a lot of bluffs in here, because at least I could pay for those. Because if you, if I put them face down, uh, okay. Oh boy, I think you're gonna have a pretty easy time this round. <laughs> All right, so we'll head into healing, uh, of which uh, Jonathan will need to do a little bit of healing. Because Albert Hosteen has only a health of three, Jonathan will only be allowed to remove one token of damage from Hosteen at this point. He's healing slowly but surely at the hands of Dr. Hagee. <laughs> it's not my best work. <laughs> yeah, but you do have a good bedside manner, and so he appreciates that. So now we're going to head into the requisition phase. And, uh, Jonathan, do you have any equipment you would like to assign? Although I guess with Mulder being the only one in the Bureau, he would be the only one who would get an equipment card unless you added one from Premier that has a field activator. No, I don't, I don't have any, anything else to requisition. Um, so I'll move on to deployment, and I will have Mulder join everybody else in the field. And so now we'll go into case assignment. Where are you sending this uh, trio of agents? I think we're going to have these guys go to the Church of the Red Museum. Mm. That one, um, its prerequisites are uh, subterfuge 5 plus or medical 5 plus. The acceleration continues. We, the enlightened, must bring the teachings of the skills for survival to mankind. Repeat in prayer. What are walk -ins? We, second souls of the first bodies. We, second souls of the first bodies. Bearers of the word and keepers of the sacraments of a new enlightenment. Believers in soul transference. Enlightened spirits who have taken possession of other people's bodies. Blessed mission and toil. Blessed mission and toil. Our struggle is transcendent and your guidance our guides. Will carry us toward the dawning of a new age. And I was going to use one of Mulder's, Mulder's tokens. tokens to do it. Okay, so that leaves one of Mulder's tokens left to pay for a site going forward. Okay, so at this point, uh, I do not have any bluffs I want to assign to that site. Let's go into investigation. Go ahead and uh, choose which skill you're going going to apply. Your agents is uh, it's going to be subterfuge, which I'm requires I'm shocked. I'm a shocked. five subterfuge. <laughs> yeah, because well, Crisis has four over. and Mulder has one, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's enough to make that skill check. And unfortunately, I got nothing. I mean, even though I'm not going to be able to stop uh, this investigation, I'm going to take this time to play Rejuvenating Caves for two. Take the conspiracy pool down to one. <sighs> play this card next to your X-File. Place 10 tokens on this card, beginning on your opponent's next turn. You may take up to two tokens from this card and place them in your conspiracy pool. The tokens become conspiracy tokens when all to counters have been removed. Discard this card. So I'm going to add 10 tokens to that. And sorry to interrupt your smooth investigation. You may fire away with your question, which is uh, what? You get to choose between two possible questions. Which is it going to be? Uh, yeah, you can ask either an affiliation question or a method question. What's your poison? And I see. I'm going to go affiliation. Let me check which X file I have on me. I don't even know. Is your affiliation alien? My X file's affiliation is not. Is not alien. Okay. I don't suppose you want to take a crack at identifying my X file at this point, right? Uh, no, no, I think I'll let it go right now. <laughs> good call. It's a good call. All right, so let's head into debriefing. 
I currently am sitting on seven cards, and I, I think I'll hold on to them for right now. See, see if maybe they help me out in a later round. What about you? I too am sitting on seven, but I think I'm going to dump that deny everything. Don't see much of a reason to hang on to that anymore. That being said, we'll pass it back to me, and I'm going to draw my free card to start a new round. And one thing I definitely need to do is get some resources, because boy, do I have very few on me at this point. Okay, so seeing as my team is all available to me, I have five res amongst them, and so that will take my, cons my resource pool up from one, a measly one, to six. I think I'll buy just two cards. What are you going to be selling? Hmm. I don't think I'm going to sell anything. Okay. You're staying as it is. You still have, like, what, eight? Yeah, I've got eight. Tokens? Uh, okay. Not buying any cards at all? Uh, actually, you know what? I think I'm going to buy three. So that still leaves you with, what, five? Five. Conspiracy. Yeah. Cards. Before we exit the briefing phase, I'm going to play Friend in the FBI, which is one of the cards I pulled. But it's not going to do me much good this round because, yeah, I'm going to be using the two first two of the ten tokens applied to Friend in the FBI and use them to pay for the card. So my, cons my resource pool is going to stay at four. I... Uh have the distinction of being one of three men to have exterminated such a creature. I was with the CIA in Vietnam. UFO was sighted for five nights over Hanoi. The Marines shot it down and brought it to us. Maybe it didn't know what a gun was, or perhaps they don't show emotion. But that innocent and blank expression as I pulled the trigger has haunted me. Until I found you. That's why I come to you, Mr. Mulder, and will continue to come to you to atone for what I've done. And maybe sometime through you, the truth will be known. So Friend in the FBI, much like Rejuvenating Caves, allows me to place 10 tokens on the card, and I can remove up to two uh, tokens and add them to my resource pool. But like I said, I'm doing that this first time to pay for the card. So let's head, it, head into healing uh, for just a moment. No one's in the hospital, uh, so no healing to be done. Uh, for requisition, I don't have any equipment cards in my hand, and all my team is currently out in the field anyway. So we'll head into deployment, where we'll keep the team deployed as they are. And for case assignments, we'll send the team to Dead Horse, Alaska, way, way up north. So everybody bring your mittens. Uh, Dead Horse Alaska, Jonathan, is a multi-site with the keywords affiliation, result, alien investigation, and evidence collection. And I'm going to use Mo Box's uh, recurring RP token to pay for Dead Horse Alaska because it does have the keyword alien investigation. So that will cover the cost of that. And, and now I turn it to you to sling any bluffs my way. I am going to play one bluff, and I need to move this to the discard pile. <laughs> one bluff. One okay. Bluff. All right. So uh, why not? Why don't I go ahead and uh, use Scully's uh, token, which will leave me with one remaining after this. 
Let's take a look at what bluff you have there. Scully's going to take a peek. Henry Tron time. It's, it's, uh, it just forces the team investigating a site to discard one equipment card of your choice. Well, may have to just sacrifice that thing, I'm afraid. Let's head into the investigation phase, of which we will be uh, applying our alien investigation skills to this site prerequisite of Alien 5. Scully has none. However, the Geiger counter does give her one <laughs> currently at this point. Charles Burke has one, Mobox has two, and Albert Hosting has two. So that gives my team a total of six alien investigation skills. Enough to investigate the site with a little bit of padding. I turn to you, Jonathan, to reveal that bluff once again, which, as we previously disclosed, was Henry Trondheim. So go ahead and pay for that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Who to see a fortel? My den store hemlighet. First, let me go. Vorten vet jag att du får tälla sån här. Se på mig, tvånt här. Och så se på dig själv. And then, of course, I guess they'll she'll lose her Geiger counter, but that won't be enough to stop you. Nope, it will. It will cut down. Uh, a little bit of the padding I had for this alien investigation site. But without the Geiger counter, I still have five alien investigation skills amongst my three gentlemen. What do you got? Computer access denied. Oof. Yep. Go ahead and read that effect. Force an opponent team to make a computer four plus skill check or they will be unable to complete the skill check. All right, that only costs you two, so that's not going to take off too much of your conspiracy pool. Come on, come on, man. Okay, so I need to make a computer four skill check. Otherwise, uh, I'm going to fail this site. Uh, thankfully, Dr. Charles Burke has a skill of computer four. Okay. Where is he? Is that him? If you mean the janitor, yeah, that's him right in there. Agent Scully called and said that uh, you'd arrest at what might be an honest-to-goodness city mystic. Well, Agent Scully jumped a gun on that one. The only thing extraordinary about this man is he doesn't speak to anyone. Where is Agent Scully? She left after four hours of attempting to interrogate this guy. Unless he jumps up and does something mystical in the next 10 minutes, we're releasing him. Good thing I, I brought along my Chuck Burke. Yeah, I whittled him down about as much as possible, but I think that's all I got. All right. <laughs> Good try, though. Because my uh, investigation into Dead Horse Alaska was successful, my team has been awarded either an affiliation or a result question. Jonathan, by any chance, is your X-Files affiliation alien? It is not. It is not. Oh, boy. Slowly but surely, I'm whittling them down. All right, so that takes about seven more, uh, seven more, six more possibilities off the table. Uh, disinclined to ask a question regarding your X-File at this point, I'm going to discard Dead Horse Alaska, and let's head into debriefing. Pitching anything? <laughs> yeah, I think I am going to pitch Die Hand Die Verlet, since I can't even read it. Oh, well, yeah, the German promo. <laughs> uh -oh. um, yeah, I do have to get rid of one, because I'm, I have eight, so I got, something's got to go. And I think I'm going to part ways with the abduction adversary it's a little pricey and my conspiracy pool is slim at this point in time okay let's pass it back to you my friend go ahead and draw your free card uh, so let's see i've drawn my card and i'm going to you're still generating five worth at this point with hosting out of uh down for the count five yes but two of them are cards 
because they're molders. So I jump up three on there. And then I draw the two that he gets me. What is your resource pool at, at this point? Eight. Okay. Ooh, healthy amount. Okay. I hate to do this, but I'm going to have to sell Frohickey. I don't oh, want wow. to, but I need some stuff. I got yeah. very little at this point. You can't, you can't so. play much with one. No. <laughs> so Frohickey's going to get me four, and I'm going to take two out of my uh, rejuvenating caves to take me up to six. Maybe I'll draw something decent, but three i don't like it but yeah i'm floundering over here right now anyway back to you let's heal hosting has got some healing to do get uh where we're only need one more turn to heal any equipment you want to requisition i don't think so no no equipment to requisition so we can just jump through that I am going to do one of the things you don't like. Oh. What would that be? I'm going to pay deep five throat. to play Deep Throat. Ah, Deep Throat. Okay. <laughs> They're here, aren't they? Mr. Mulder, they've been here for a long, long time. Is your X-Files affiliation government? Damn it, my X Files affiliation is government. Oh, there you well go. Well done, Jonathan. That's you just man. got into a sizable right lead. Congrats. <laughs> okay, so you've got me down to eight at this point. So if you should be successful in your site investigation, you might be in uh, a spitting distance of being able to reasonably ask an identity question about my X File. Provide, again, provided your. Your side investigation goes smoothly, and it might, because as you can see, I'm not sitting on a whole lot of conspiracy. Yeah, my problem is I'm not sitting on a site that I can investigate. Ooh, <laughs> well, at least the deep throat got you that's, a question out of the I mean, So I you know what? That wasn't a total loss. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to pay two. Grid pattern. I use grid pattern. What a great card. Well, and if I can find the one. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. All right, so I'll play that, and that Love me the effect of that card is it allows me to go through the discard pile and place any card in it in my hand. Mm -hmm. What do you want? Just a few minutes of your time, ma'am. Beautiful day, isn't it? I wonder if I can interest you in the word of the Lord, leather bound in black or red. Your choice. Go away. This is one for target sighted. That will give us our site we're going to go to, which is Church of the Red Museum again. Right, which is medical and subter it's subterfuge five plus. Right. five plus. All right, cool. And that will put us there. And so, how do you want to pay for that? I uh, will burn Mulder's last token. All right, so at this point, uh, it's up to me to lay down some bluffs and see if maybe I can curtail this lead of yours. And I'm going to put down um, one bluff at this point. So now we'll head into the investigation phase, and you'll decide if that bluff is, whether that bluff is too intimidating uh, for your team to want to investigate. Oh, we're going. We're, we're there. My poker face is not strong, unfortunately. Okay, so you're going to send your team to the site, and uh, which of the two skills there are you going to apply your team skills? I'm seeing, Yeah, I was like, Subterfuge seems like a, a wise one, considering Scully's Dream wasn't able to be played for medical. All right, so if, you, if I'm not mistaken, Mulder has one and Krychek has four. That's enough to make the uh, prerequisite of five. Yes. That's correct. Excellent. I'm going to flip over that one bluff, which is my second nasty surprise, which, again, I will pay. I will play to add five tokens to my conspiracy pool. It was face down, so it only costs two. That will increase it from three to six. All right. That was a timely pull. Um, so now... At the at this moment, you have a clear path. Uh, remind me, what were the two questions again? Method and what? Affiliation. Uh, 
Okay, that leaves me with only one recourse, and that is to play Computer Access Denied, which you just pay played on me in the previous round, uh, which I'll reduce my conspiracy pool down to four. Look, are you sure you know what you're doing? Because if you don't, it's my job on the line. With that being said, it would it's a safe bet that Church of the Red Museum will not be a successful investigation this time. I think that's a safe bet. All right, so we'll head into debriefing, and I'm currently sitting on seven cards, and so I'll hold on to all of them for the next round. What about I, you? I've got seven. Okay, cool, cool. So we'll pass it back to me, and I'm going to draw a, yet another free card. And I will use two tokens from Friend in the FBI to increase my resource pool from four to six. And I'm going to add the five from my four agents to the resource pool, and that's going to take it up to 11. I think that's the first time I've seen double digits at this game. Yeah, we'll do four. Take it down to seven. From 11 to seven, I will get four cards, and I'm going to pass it over to you, Jonathan, to sell as you wish. I am going to sell Crop Circles X. That's four, right? It is. Travel right. Arrangements. Is That's five. The travel Arrangements, one or two? Oh, it's two. Six. You're good for six. six. And then Scully's Dream and Oregon Coast to go to ten. Wow. Whew. I'm going to buy... Four, I think four, which will put me my conspiracy at eight. Okay, wow. Twelve, and then I bought four. I pulled my second hard evidence, which I'm going to play that now, and I'm going to add five tokens to my pool minus the two for paying for it. So that takes me up to ten resources. That's my last hard evidence for the healing phase. Everyone is in top-notch health, and no one is in the hospital. Moving past that, I have no equipment cards in my hand, so there'll be no requisition to speak of this time. For deployment, everyone is going to stay right where they are in the field. And for case assignment, uh, we're going to send the team uh, op the complete opposite of Dead Horse Alaska. We're going to go down south this time, all the way to Arecibo, Puerto Rico. So Arecibo, Puerto Rico, Jonathan, is a multi-site with the keywords affiliation, method, alien investigation, and computer. And because it has the keyword alien investigation, I'm going to use MoBox's uh, RP token to pay for that site. And so, I wait any bluffs you have. Let's, I don't have any bluffs to play. No bluffs. Let's head into the investigation phase in which uh, we'll be applying our alien investigation skills to this site, of which uh, Charles Burke has one, Mo Box has two, Albert Hosteen has two, for a total of five, enough to make the site prerequisite. Uh, got anything for me, Jonathan? I think so. Uh oh Just got to decide what it is. <laughs> well, you certainly have enough uh, conspiracy points uh, to do some damage. The question is, in what form would you like to take? I think I think it's time to inflict some pain. Oh boy.
throat said, trust no one. Trust no one. No! Let's go with Slithers in the Night. Oh, and a That's corpse. affiliation. That is, that is indeed affiliation. He doesn't have a game effect, so yeah, I guess that's partly why he's so inexpensive. So yeah, no game effect for Slithers in the Night, um, but it is taken from a pretty cool episode. I do like that one. Oh man, the Die Hand Diver Let's. Was I'm noticing a the theme. You got a lot of Die Hand Diver Let's cards in that. That deck. was both the episode that <laughs> freaked me out the most and I liked the most. Yes. <laughs> So there's in the night, if I'm not mistaken, Jonathan has the keywords adversary, occult, creature, anything I'm leaving out. And pawn. And pawn. I forgot about pawn. Oh. Okay. Because it does have the keyword occult, I'm going to use Chuck Burke's uh, token to negate one occult adversary. You gotta take a look at this. Come on, it's a trick. Yeah. Not of the camera. We've called animal control and we're sending <laughs> the snake back to, uh, you know, uh, detention. So he's out of the picture. Well, that leaves me only one other choice. Use the rest of my conspiracy points and play paper shackles. Ooh, that's going to, uh, what's that going to do? I haven't seen that one in a while. I know it's something involving criminal investigation. It forces a five plus criminal investigation skill check. Hey, what should occur if I'm unable to make criminal five? Let's see. Or they will be unable to add their skills to a site skill check this turn. So. All right. So we better make sure we can make criminal five at this point. All right. Let's take a look at what we have. Scully has two. Charles Burke has none. Ouch. Mobox has three, which well, is it. five. Enough. And Albert Hosting has zero. So oh, Scully oh, and Mobox have just enough between the two of them to make five. So whew. <laughs> I love the Paper Shackles card mainly because of the title. So mm -hmm. it's a cool one to play. I thank you just for playing it because I get to put all of these cards up on the screen during post-production and <laughs> people get to marvel at those cards. Uh, because it was a successful investigation, my team's been awarded uh, an affiliation or a method question, and I'm still struggling to figure out your X-Files affiliation. By any chance, is your X-Files affiliation evolutionary? It is. Oh, finally. <laughs> Took me three eight affiliation questions, but I finally got it. That only narrows it down to seven. Uh, so there's... Still a lot to choose from, and you, as of your very successful uh, deep throat question last round, have me uh, down to eight. So it's neck and neck at this point. Still, any, definitely anyone's game. So I'm disinclined to ask an X file identity question at this point because that would an incorrect answer would give you a penalty question, and I'm not feeling lucky with a one in seven. <laughs> but then again, you would be. If I well, it, this is interesting because I asked an affiliation question of you. You already know my X Files affiliation, 
So if I were to take a guess at your X-Files identity, the only thing you would be able to do is ask an identity question. Why don't we do that just for fun? I'm you down? I'm down. All right. Yeah. So by any chance, Jonathan, is your X-File Eve? It is. Are you serious? It is. Holy crap, show me that card. Yeah. I cannot believe I got that. <laughs> yep. Oh my god, it's Eve. And the Gen Con Eve, too, by the way. Wow. Yep. Yep. You went with one of the Gen Con X-Files, my man. Just a minute. It's okay. My dad will pay for him when he gets out of the bathroom. Wow, one in seven. Holy cow. <laughs> well, that was kind of a, a very abrupt ending to the game. I figured we were going to be... Yeah, I just figured we'd each scratch off one, and then we would be continuing on. Let's play this out timeline-wise, like darkest timeline. Let's say I got it wrong. You got a penalty question. What would you have asked? Oh, uh, let's see. Cigarette smoking man. It is not. Dead Horse Alaska... Mm -hmm. it's oh yeah, called, we went there. It's called Frozen Submarine. Frozen Submarine, I, yeah. I, I didn't know that. Yeah, that was a, that's a pretty cool one too. I wouldn't mind if I got that one during the bingo drawing just because, yeah, the title change on that was pretty cool. What uh, non-Gen Con cards, aside from Deny Everything and the German promo, what other ones did you throw in there? And I'm pretty sure I threw the German promo in there by accident. I put a second uh, grid pattern search in there that wasn't there. Um, a Gen Con card, but it's also oh, okay. a Gen Con card. Yeah. Um, those not, you want to have two of those in every deck. I had, I see, Crycheck Possessed <laughs> was in because I put mm -hmm. him in, and then uh, no one's so paranoid. Oh, yeah. Gosh, I think I did actually leave that card out of my deck. That... I put a Mulligan in. Oof. Is that know. by accident or is that intentional? I now, I had mixed feelings on Mulligan. It's actually served me well once or twice. Uh, I put the Thinker in. Mm. Let's see. Well, there's my only other Gen Con card right here. Uh, Suppressed Fury, um, which I which I won as a result of a uh, a poster contest on Matt and Mike's uh, X Files CCG channel uh, for. Uh, one of the three matches between Dave May and Dave Frank. So I, I did a poster of uh, of the Daves, and yeah, they selected it as their favorite. So Dave Frank sent me that uh, lovely Gen Con card there. So that rounds out the two Gen Con cards I have in my whole set here. Dana Scully, Suppressed Fury. Yeah, nowadays you buy one of those in 2023, it's going to cost kind of like what you paid for to acquire that lovely uh set of 60 cards there well so, now this one i got it cheaper than everybody else you got it cheaper than of uh, the two other recent sales of gen con decks that took place yeah you got the cheapest of the three that i three sales that i know that have occurred in the last year so yes do you keep a master set of the cards on hand or you just yeah you do yeah, you got a master set binder good mm -hmm. man good man yeah so with that Plus two copies minimum to conclude for gameplay purposes. You want to have ideally three of every card. Yeah, one of the things I got yeah. rid of a long time ago that just I hate it. That T-shirt that they want, you know, in the get in the contest. Uh, let me think. T-shirt. Which which T-shirt was it? The X. It was that X Files T-shirt. The X Files CCG T-shirt. The black one. Mm hmm. Okay. I had one. Yeah. I have, I have one. one too, but it's like extra large or something. I, so it's but I, I think I gave it away like to to like a Goodwill <laughs> a long time ago. Uh, <laughs> and now I'm kicking myself over it. It's like, man, I wish I'd have kept that. <clears throat> you know what? Since you're going to be coming to File Fest, most likely, um, Mike Mackey, as far as I know, he is going to be bringing some non card merch along the way, including t shirts. Cool. So you got a chance of getting a new one. I don't know what size. If you want, I can ask. Do you have a particular size, or do you just you don't wear it? Just want to keep it as a 
No, I won't wear it. I, I might wear it yeah, there. Yeah, maybe wear it there, and that's about it. But yeah, I, I know he's going to be bringing like a lot of his stuff because he's trying to unload it, and so he does have quite a few T-shirts. Uh, so I, I think he's going to be bringing a lot of stuff. He's probably going to be bring some, bringing some uncut sheets mm -hmm. as well. So if you're interested in getting your hands on one of those. Yeah, I've got one. I, I want to get one of all of them. A couple other things uh, I just want to mention before we sign off the usual uh, – uh, YouTube uh, request, please. If you like this video, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button while you're at it. Leave a comment. Let me know what you liked about the game. Um, if you're interested in uh, appearing on the channel, maybe squaring off with me in a game, uh, please also reach out to me. The, the email is in the channel, uh, so you can uh, email me if uh, you're interested. And I think that about wraps it up. Uh, Jonathan, anything you want to say? Some parting words? Oh, yeah. It was a lot of fun. I look forward to doing it again. Uh... I was glad to get to, to, to show off the Gen Con deck. Uh, yeah, and, and the fact is that those cards were probably sitting in a desk or in a closet or in a cellar for the better part of 30 years, and they're finally getting a chance to you know get breathe in some fresh air and actually get some use. So it really was a privilege to get to see those cards in action. So I appreciate you for taking the time to sleeve them and uh, bring them into a game. It's not something you you see very often, and so I, I'm glad I'll be able to bring that content out for people to watch. So I thank you kindly for that. Happy to do it. All right, and so with that, uh, we'll sign. I'll sign us off, and uh, be sure to tune in next time for another exciting edition of Alien Investigations. <laughs>